My name is Paolo Della Bella, and I'm currently working as the head of the arrhythmia department and the EP laboratories at the Hospital San Raffaele, Milano. The study is named PARTITA. That is the acronym of the meaning of the study. So is it, it means is prognosis affected by timing of catheter ablation. So it focuses on a very specific population of patients that already have an ICD, an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, and suffer from arrhythmia recurrences, so shock for ventricular tachycardias. The, there are a couple of points critical to the study. First of all, uh, it's a timing study. It tells us when should we provide a catheter ablation treatment uh, early, waiting for recurrences of ventricular tachycardia, as it uh, per guidelines now commonly stated. So we should wait many recurrences. So one of the aims of the study is to investigate whether an earlier approach, just after the first shock, is better than a delayed strategy. And then, of course, uh, the very important uh, points touched by the study are um, the following. Uh, prevention of VT recurrences following ablation can impact favorably survival, uh, can impact um, admission to the hospital for subsequent heart failure episodes. So these are all uh, questions that uh, were in our mind when we decided to draw this study. So uh, the study design is a multi-center prospective two-stage study aiming at studying what happens from the implant of the ICD to the first shock. So the first uh, phase of the study that we named phase A aims at investigating specific features that might be predicting a subsequent shock. Uh, the second phase, phase B, is randomization of patients that had a shock in two groups. One is immediate ablation, so just after the shock or a deferred strategy and see what happens until serious arrhythmic events like an air storm can occur. So the initial study cohort is of about 517 patients recruited over a nine year time interval across 16 European centers. Of those patients, uh, 56 uh, qualified for a shock. And one of the first finding of the study is the low number of patients that had a shock. One of the reasons is that um, uniform ICD programming strategies were mandatory throughout the study, including long-term detection intervals. So wait a lot of time, 20 seconds, before the arrhythmia gets treated, and extensive use of anti-tachycardia pacing to avoid as much as possible the shock. So that really corresponds to a, so to say, modern strategy of programming. Going back to uh, our study cohort, among the 56 patients that went into the study phase B, uh, we had a one-to-one -one randomization between immediate ablation, immediate means between uh, the shock and the next two weeks, and a conventional treatment arm. Over a two and a half year interval, the, the study really proved that the primary endpoint uh, mortality and admission for subsequent heart failure was met as there was a significant, how large significant reduction of arrhythmia event in the patient that underwent ablation. And that touched mainly uh, the endpoint on mortality that was absent in the ablation group and it was substantial in the patient that uh, were assigned to a deferred strategy. Key findings are, first of all, it is important and appropriate to um, set homogeneous ICD programming strategies to avoid as, mass, as, as much as possible the shock. The second finding is once uh, the shock is delivered, you better don't wait, but do an ablation procedure that also by protocol was defined very strictly in endpoint and success. So substrate based um, during sinus rhythm, modification of all late potentials, prevention of VT inducibility. So that really brought along a significant uh, reduction of mortality. So the key message is once your patient has a shock, you better do the ablation. Other uh, ancillary findings uh, are the following. Um, repeated treatments with anti-tachycardia, which is good, patient feels no shock. However, uh, 
bring the patient to a subsequent shock. Uh, we quantified the risk for any run of ATP of about 4% for delivering a shock. So the more ATP the patient receives, the closer the time of the shocks comes, and probably in the future we should really care for also for this type of treatments. I think, again, uh, a couple of indications. First of all, uh, they indicated really uh, you should stick to the meditrit indications. So for the uh, programming of the ICD, this is very important. Follow the patient and perform the ablation when the shock starts. So instead of charging, overcharging the patient with enteric drugs, it really, to me, is a strong trust and a strong indication to move on earlier to treatment of the arrhythmias. The next steps are, uh, I guess, uh, for sure, um, assess whether we should find a critical number of ATP treatments to avoid the shock and to do the ablation before the shock. So, and really compare whether we might just bringing back the clock might even improve the prognosis in these patients. Take home message is do care for ventricular arrhythmias, take them seriously and try to treat them.